On Sunday's video report, I told you there was one game that I absolutely loved. And if not for the fact that I pushed on Saturday's college football card with a rare 30-dime release, with Arizona ending up with a push against Oregon State, I would have had another rare 30-dime play in the NFL yesterday. And remember, it was just a week ago on Sunday that I had my first 30-dime release in almost two years in the NFL with the Cowboys stopping Kansas City. And what would that play have been? The Los Angeles Rams. But because of my money management principles, I decided that I could only come out with a top-rated normal 15-dime release on the Rams yesterday. Didn't mean I loved the game any less, but I wanted to let you know how much I loved Los Angeles yesterday. And you saw what happened. The Rams, a sluggish first half, came out, 13-point favorite, second half exploded, and whacked the Houston Texans 33-7 to and took care of business. Now, I also tried to take care of business as well. I realized that so many of you out there got that play on Arizona and walked away with the push. You didn't lose money gambling, per se, on Saturday night, but hey, you paid for the play, and I felt awful because, again, you didn't lose money at your sports book, at the casino, with your bookie, but you paid for the play. So I tried to make good and get you the Rams, and I did everything but hold your hand and tell you how much I loved the play. So hopefully you cashed in and you made money on my dime yesterday, and I'm glad you did. Now, I have to be honest with you. I'm sitting here in a hotel room in Chandler, Arizona, and I swear to God, I turned the TV on yesterday. I find the game on TV, and the very first play is Lamar Miller at the Texans running up the middle untouched and running into the end zone and putting the Texans up, and I'm thinking, are the gambling gods not going to smile on me today? But then, of course, as I said, sluggish first half, but in the third quarter on, Rams break the game open, and the Texans were every bit as bad as I thought they were. And Tom Savage, every bit as poor in his play as I thought he would be, just like the week prior at home against Indianapolis, just like in the season opener against Jacksonville, and that offensive line couldn't give him any protection. And that defense, it's just a mirage. It's not the Texans' defense as it was a few years ago. And I'll tell you what, the L.A. Rams, in case you haven't noticed, now winners of six of their last seven, leading the league in an offense, averaging almost 33 points a game, they're a pretty damn good team. Nobody may go to their games, but they're a pretty damn good team. Okay, enough about yesterday's games. I'm going to talk about tonight's game in just a second. Carolina and Miami is going to be your free pick because I don't really have an inclination for either one of these teams to put my own money on it. I think the best bet is actually in the NBA. Free pick yesterday. I told you the only other game I was interested in on Sunday's card, the official free play, a winner, the Detroit Lions, another team overcoming a sluggish start, but getting the cover at home against the lousy Cleveland Browns. Uh, you know, part of this job sometimes is being a cheerleader. Part of it is also being a shrink, being a psychologist. My father used to be president of a labor union. Some days he's come home from work and you say, how did the day go? And he said, I had to turn my collar around and take confessions. That's how I feel sometimes with the job here. Sometimes handicappers need pick-me-ups. Oh, you know, this is why I say to you that I don't celebrate the wins. I don't lament the losses. I just believe in staying even keel. As I said many times, yes, when I lose a game, I'm the first guy to mutter my favorite obscenity, and then I move on because you can't dwell on it. But handicappers are not immune to it. And as I said, as the guy who runs the company and leads these sites, you know, when a guy loses, it's tough because they realize they're losing. They're costing you money, and that's what makes the world go around. Gamblers have to win. Handicappers have to win. Everybody has to be in unison. But even guys like Chris Jordan, and I'll use him as an example, there's a guy who, coming into this weekend, over the past 353, 63 days, almost one whole year, had made $1 betters $60,000. Now think about that. That's wins minus losses minus the big. If I would come to you last November and said, hey, listen, I got a guy. If you follow every one of his plays over the course of one year, one year, you'll make $60,000. And the cost of his plays over that one year would be a little under $2,000. Hmm, okay. I'll spend two grand, let's say, and I'll make 60000 on that 58 grand. You'd say, where do I sign up? Because I'm not going to make that on the stock market, right? Pretty good deal. Well, he had two big plays this weekend, and he lost them both. A rare 3000 star, triple your wager play, 
and a 2,000 star W wager play, even though he's had tremendous success with these plays. He lost them both back to back on Friday and Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday. He's like devastated. That's how guys take it. They take these things hard. If you think handicappers take these things cavalierly and just, oh, I lost the play, hell with it, they're crushed. <laughs> I mean, and I get the calls because they're like all walking the ledge. And I understand. I have been there as a gambler, as a handicapper, as the guy that runs the sites. You know, and it's like he's still up. One dollar betters are still up over fifty four, fifty five thousand dollars over the last twelve months. Doesn't make the losing any easier from their perspective or your perspective. And yesterday was one of those days. You know, Anthony Red hit the hundred and fifty nine play number uh, eight out of eleven on Saturday night with Oklahoma over TCU, and then last night, one hundred and fifty nine play on the Denver Broncos. Yeah, seriously, what a bad call. Uh, Joey Juice, Joey Crutell of HBO's Bowlers, one of the producers there of the show, uh, improved to nine and one with his hundred dime college football releases. Washington State, great call over Utah on the road on Saturday. Yesterday, up the ante. Why not? Two hundred dime release in the NFL. Redskins, competitive game. Loser happens. That's how it goes. It's gambling. There are no guarantees. Let's talk about this particular game here tonight. Oh, the guy that has the big play tonight, though, however, in the NFL is going to be uh, Eric Schrader, who has his third ever 200-dime NFL release since joining the site. He's a perfect two for two. Uh, Houston minus nine over Cleveland, 33-17, October 15th. That was a road game. Texans to Sean Watson. They were up by like three touchdowns in that game. It wasn't even close before the Browns got a couple of garbage scores late in the game to make it competitive. The second 200-dimer, Buffalo kickings Oakland's ass, 34-14 on October 29th. You got each of those winners for over half price off. $10 betters in the NFL, up over $4,900 in the NFL this season. You get it for over half price off again today by using coupon code ERIC. Also today, uh, Jack Raymond is a perfect 3-0 with his Monday night totals. He has a 60-dime NFL winner, number 7 out of 9, his Monday night total of the year, the over-under. Uh, Gabriel DuPont, if you have to be an NHL player, second ever 100-dime NHL release goes tonight. That's one of the key plays. I think, again, tonight the NBA uh, has the best bet on the card. I'm going on the Timberwolves and the Jazz. So let's talk about this game here tonight. My problem with these teams, these are two teams that I can't tell you the last time I ever won money involving either one of these teams. So I could have told you a week ago, maybe three weeks ago, there was no way I was going to have a play on these games. So Carolina is coming off the 20 to 17 home win against Atlanta. And before then, it was a 17 three road win against Tampa. Falcons and Buccaneers, two teams that have struggled all season long. Uh, Miami's come up with a 27-24 home loss to the Oakland Raiders. Before that, the 40-0 road loss to Baltimore. You got a Carolina team that's just so stout defensively. Number one in the league in defense, overall defense, giving up 274.1 yards a game. Number two in sacks, 29. This is all entering this week's action. Um, number two in run defense, giving up 78.4 yards a game. I don't think that's really imperative, though, tonight because the Dolphins can't run the ball, and they traded away J.H.I. a couple weeks ago, right? Uh, fourth in scoring defense, 17.6 points a game. Uh, John Gruden was quoted as saying in an article I read in the Charlotte Observer that uh, John Gruden, of course, the man who has never failed in an opportunity to uh, go and embellish things and have a little hyperbole, said that... Uh, Quote, uh, they could run the table. <laughs> you know, it's John Gruden. I mean, does he ever say have an understatement? Um, this is a team, though, of course, is going to have New Orleans at home and Minnesota or New Orleans on the road and Minnesota at home. Well, let me see them run the table. OK, uh, you got a Miami team that uh, does well against the run, giving up just 94 yards a game. But Carolina doesn't run the ball. I mean, Cam Newton's been their leading rusher in four straight games. Uh, you got Jay Cutler playing behind an offensive line and has not given him the greatest protection this year, playing with crack ribs. You got a Miami defense that allows almost 70% completions on third and fourth downs this season. That's the second worst uh, mark in the league. But I got to say, Cutler's played well. Do you realize last week against Oakland, 16 for 16, his first 16 passes he completed? Um, 311 yards and three touchdowns versus the Raiders. But then again, Raiders have one of the worst secondaries, one of the worst pass defenses in the league. They have one of the worst pass rushes 
in the league as well. But he's been very effective this year. Cutler has in the red zone. Uh, 23 uh, pass opportunities in the red zone, nine touchdown passes. That's third best in the league. But you have two teams here tonight that both struggle when it comes to putting points on the board. Um, Miami only averages 14.5 points a game, 32nd ranked offense. Carolina is only 24th in the league. They average about 18 points a game. Uh, Cam Newton, uh, I came across a great stat researching this game. Uh, Cam Newton at home, dating back to the start of last season, is only a 53.6% passer. And they traded away one of his top receivers, Kelvin Benjamin, a couple weeks ago, right? Um, on third downs, he's a 65.4% completion uh, passer. Um, you know, this number, nine points for two teams that don't score a hell of a lot. I'd like to tell you Carolina wins this game 23-7. to seven. I just don't think Miami has that much, and I think Carolina's defense can overwhelm them. But it just seems to me that the Dolphins plus the points would be the logical way to go. But then I tick down the boxes and I go, Dolphins can't run the ball. Jay Cutler's going to be harassed in that backfield all night long. I know he's got the quick release. But when you have a one-dimensional offense like the Dolphins do, that means the Carolina Panthers are just going to be able to tee up on him all night long. So I would think the way to go here is to lay the points with the Carolina Panthers. But listen, I'm just taking a guess, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. I liked the Lions yesterday as a free pick. This is more of a guess. I've analyzed the game. I've broken it down a hundred different ways. Ultimately, it's a 50-50 proposition. But this is more of a coin flip play. And you know how good I am with the free picks. It's just a guess. I think Carolina is the way to go. Let me give you a better uh, complimentary play. I like the Milwaukee Bucks tonight at home in the NBA minus the three and a half against the Memphis Grizzlies team that's coming off a 111-96 loss at Houston on Saturday. The Grizzlies have lost four of their last six games, and their defense has sprung a leak. They allowed a season-high 104 points or, or, um, in four I'm sorry, they've allowed 104 or more points in four of those last six games. And again, four of those six games have been losses. Before that six-game stretch, most points they had allowed, 103 in any of those games. And in four of their first six games this season, they held their foes to under 100. Um, you know, now that Eric Bledsoe has joined the Bucks, they've moved Malcolm Brogdon to the second team. Where with Matthew Della Dova, it's an interesting uh, combination because then they've got almost two point guards on the floor at the same time. So the motion offense is uh, much better. You know, Eric Bledsoe hasn't exactly been lights out. Far from it in the first two games that he started. Both have been wins, granted, for the Bucks. But uh, six for 15 in the one game, four for 13 in the other game, one for 11 combined from three-point range. But he'll get his legs under him. I just think it's a good spot here to take a, uh, the Bucks at home against a Memphis team that's struggling defensively and on the road. So I'll lay the three and a half points with Milwaukee here. And that game I like a little more, obviously, than the Carolina Panthers play. And that'll do it. And back again tomorrow when we do it again.